As we all know, the United States has recently teamed up with the Netherlands and Japan to fully contain China's chips. The goal is to make China's chip process stuck at 14 nanometers and cannot move forward. To be honest, the current situation is very unfavorable to China. ASML's EUV lithography machine cannot be bought in China, and ASML and Nikon are not allowed to sell immersion lithography machines that can be used in the 7 nanometers process. They can only sell lithography machines with a process above 14 nanometers. However, the resolution of the lithography machine made in China is still 90 nanometers, and it will take a very long time to reach below 14 nanometers. Therefore, many people believe that it is basically impossible for China to catch up with or even surpass the United States in a short period of time on silicon-based chips. In addition, silicon-based chips are about to reach their performance limits and are destined to be replaced by new materials. Therefore, now is a good time for China to choose to change lanes and overtake. Quantum chips, photonic chips, and carbon-based chips are all new directions. Among them, carbon-based chips have become the hope of many people, because China is not only not behind in terms of carbon-based chips, but is also at the forefront of the world in the fields of materials, manufacturing, and research. By the end of 2022, China's graphene patent technology applications related to carbon-based chips accounted for about 80% of the world's total. In addition, the electron mobility of carbon-based chips is much higher than that of silicon-based materials, and the performance is at least 10 times better that of silicon-based chips, while power consumption can be greatly reduced. Others believe that because carbon-based chips do not use silicon, the existing lithography machine technology may be subverted. We may no longer need EUV lithography machines to make chips, so China must gain a first-mover advantage in this field. In fact, the current carbon-based chips are basically still in the conceptual stage, and there are no finished products that can actually be mass-produced. Well, since we frequently mention carbon-based chips, what are their advantages? Why didn't carbon-based chips enter the market as we expected? At present, which country is in the leading position in the research and development progress of graphene? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the three obvious advantages of carbon-based chips. First, carbon-based chips have lower limits, better performance and lower power consumption which are more suitable for the rapid development of future technology. Carbon-based chips are built from carbon-based wafers, and the basis of carbon-based wafers is graphene semiconductor materials. Because graphene has excellent characteristics such as high carrier mobility and good thermal conductivity, graphene transistors run 5 to 10 times faster than silicon-based transistors, while consuming only one-tenth of silicon-based transistors. It provides carbon-based chips with lower limits, better performance and lower power consumption. Second, carbon-based chips do not have high requirements for the process technology of lithography machines. A carbon-based chip, using a 90 nanometers process is expected to produce a silicon-based chip with performance and integration equivalent to a 28 nanometers technology node, and a carbon-based chip, using a 28 nanometers process can achieve a silicon-based chip equivalent to a 7 nanometers technology node. That is to say, Using a 28 nanometers lithography machine can obtain the effect of the world's most advanced EUV lithography machine. Third, the current international technology in this field is almost blank. Early research and development can gain a first mover advantage. In the research and development of carbon based chips, this technological pursuit is mainly carried out between two top universities in the world Peking University and Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Chinese professor Peng Lianmao of Peking University said that compared with foreign silicon-based chips, China's domestic carbon-based chips used in processing large-scale data are fast and low in power consumption, which can save at least 30%. Moreover, the current domestic graphene wafer production technology is at the international leading level in terms of the size and quality of graphene single crystal wafers. It can be seen that China already has an advantage in the research and development of carbon-based chips. At present, the vast majority of chips use silicon-based integrated circuit technology, and high-end chip technology has been monopolized by individual manufacturers for a long time. 
China spends as much as 300 billion US dollars on imported chips every year. Accelerating the development of the semiconductor industry represented by chips has long been China's national strategy. However, under the background of anti globalization and industrial blockade, the development of China's existing silicon based semiconductors is struggling, and most of them are concentrated in low profit and low value added links. This new path of carbon based chips has brought more possibilities for China to manufacture high end chips. At present, the technology of global semiconductor manufacturers still insists on silicon wafers. Intel, Samsung, and TSMC are investing all their resources in 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers manufacturing technologies. That is to say, for at least five years in the future, mass production of carbon based chips will not be born among these few. Then, the most suitable environment to become the leader of emerging factories in this field will be in China. According to official information, in 2021, Huawei released a patent for graphene transistors. Earlier, it was reported that Huawei will establish a dedicated scientific research team with Peking University to devote itself to the development of carbon based chips. It can be seen that carbon based chips may have become one of the future development directions of Huawei chips. However, no company in the world has yet produced commercial carbon based chips. So, why didn't carbon based chips enter the market as we expected? In short, carbon based chips cannot replace silicon based chips for the time being. 1. Carbon nanotubes are difficult to purify. For chip manufacturing, carbon nanotubes have excellent performance, but it is not easy to use them. For carbon nanotubes, it is difficult to completely remove impurities in carbon nanotubes by a single purification method. Carbon nanotubes often contain a large amount of impurities after preparation, and the impurities mainly include carbon impurities and metal impurities. The existence of impurities in carbon nanotubes limits its application, so the purification of carbon nanotubes has become a technical problem that needs to be solved urgently. 2. Mass production is difficult. In addition to process limitations, the mass production of carbon-based chips is still much more difficult than silicon-based chips. On the one hand, the research on graphene in various countries in the world has not yet reached the point where carbon-based wafers can be mass-produced to meet the needs of major companies, on the other hand, there are differences in the related technologies and process equipment between carbon-based semiconductors and silicon-based semiconductors. 90% of the existing silicon-based semiconductor processing equipment can be directly applied to carbon-based, but some processes or equipment need to be debugged to adapt to the production of carbon-based semiconductor devices. Mass production is an important prerequisite for commercialization. Without large-scale production, commercialization cannot be achieved, if production is insufficient, prices cannot be lowered. As for the timing of mass production of existing products, Chinese carbon-based chip researchers say that since 2018, when the entire line of former 4-inch carbon-based wafers went into experimentation, 4-inch, 5-micron grid-length carbon-based wafers have come out on the product side. These achievements have been able to directly hold hands with front-end RF device manufacturers. Carbon tube chips for the Internet of Things with relatively low difficulty are expected to be commercially available in the next three to five years. Carbon-based chips used in mobile phones and servers will take longer. In addition, according to the current situation in China, domestic companies are more willing to cooperate with universities when the research results are mature. Because cooperation with uncertainty, it is difficult to bring profits to the company in the short term, and there are certain risks. Therefore, there is not enough motivation to invest funds. The carbon-based semiconductor technology, on the other hand, requires engineering research in between, from the laboratory to industry, where challenges include continued assurance of funding, change of concept, and compatibility with existing industries, which are difficult to solve by relying only on research teams. All in all, with the wide application of mobile smart devices, cloud storage and big data processing, the rapidly developing information industry has put forward unprecedented requirements for future semiconductor chips and information processing technology. In order to continue Moore's law and cope with the post-Moore's law era, and continuously improve chip performance, it is necessary to develop new semiconductor chips with faster development speed and lower energy consumption. 
China has gradually gained an advantage on the road of carbon-based chips, but the integration level of the carbon-based chips currently developed is still far behind the silicon-based chips commonly used in the world. Experts in China said that with national attention and sufficient research funding, it is expected that carbon-based technology can be applied on a small scale in some special areas in three to five years. It is expected that after 10 years carbon-based chips are expected to gradually become mainstream chip technology with product changes. Well, thanks for listening. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.